We are finishing our notes to say factoring trinomials. We have three that we didn't do. So we are going to start here, x squared minus 16. So our rules say identify the a, b, and c first. So remember it's like ax squared plus bx plus c. So if you look at this one, we don't have a middle term. We don't have that B value. So we need to rewrite it so it does have a B value. This is the A, this is the C, because there's no BX. So if there is no B value, that means I can write 0X minus 16. Because I need to have an A, B, and C so I can do the X box. If there is no BX, then it's a 0x. So this is a, this is b, this is c. Draw your x, draw your box. After you draw your box, go ahead and put your first term here. It's just x squared. And your last term in the bottom right. This is AC, this is B. AC would be 1 times negative 16, which gives us negative 16, and B is 0. So we do the X games where we figure out what multiplies to get negative 16, but adds to get 0. So I'm going to put it in. Y equals negative 16 divided by X. If you don't have a calculator, go grab it now. So I'm going to put it in and then look at my table. I'm going to look at my numbers. So 1 and negative 16. If I add those, I'm never going to get 0. 2 and negative 8? Nope. What about 4 and negative 4? Yeah. 4, negative 4. So we're going to put them here. These don't matter the order that you put them. You just put, them, put one in one and the other one in the other one. So we look at x squared. The only way to get x squared is that we have an x and an x. Then we look and see what needs to go in this spot in order to get negative 4x. Remember, we're multiplying. So what times x is going to give us negative 4x? Negative 4. Negative 4. Then what times x is going to give me 4x? 4. So our factors are x minus 4 and x plus 4. Okay, that is how it's going to always be whenever you have no middle term. They'll be the same binomials except one is positive and one is negative. And the way you find out what the number is, is you look at what is the square root of 16? Square root of 16 is 4. So see how we put minus 4 and plus 4? Turn over on the back real quick because I want to talk about a couple of other ones. 5x squared minus 81. See how there's no middle term? I look at what is the square root of 81? What times what gives me 81? 9. So I can easily just do this. These are called perfect squares. If you have the difference, see how that's subtraction, the difference of perfect squares, you can write them the same but different signs.
See, I have one a negative, one a positive. It works every time. And sometimes you'll see it like this. These are, these are also called perfect squares. 4x squared is a perfect square because what times itself gives us 4? 2. So this would be 2x. What times itself gives you 49? 7. So one of them will be plus 7, one of them will be minus 7. These are the difference of perfect squares because it's subtraction of two perfect squares. But you can always do Xbox if you don't want to memorize this or remember this. This is a shortcut for us that we can use, but we don't have to. All right, let's go back to our problems. 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. This is A, this is B, this is C. Make your X, make your box. First term, last term. A, C, and B. Go ahead and do those. A times C, 2 times 5 is 10. B is 11. So we're looking for the factors of 10 that add to get 11. Notice that they're all positive. So our magic numbers will be positive. So if you're not sure of the factors of 10, put them in. Y equals 10 divided by X. And this helps you look at all your factors to see which ones will add to equal 11. Look at them. 1 and 10. 1 times 10 is 10. 1 plus 10 is 11. Go ahead and put your magic numbers in your diagonals. Okay, so to get 2x squared in this first box, I've got to figure out what I'm multiplying together to get 2x squared. So I know they're both x's. But one of them is going to have to be something different in order to make it 2x squared. we got to figure out which one. Look at this column, 2x squared and 1x. Can they both be divided evenly by a number? 2x squared and 1x. But what about 2x squared and 10x? Yeah, what can divide both of those evenly? 2. 2 is your GCF, your greatest common factor of 2 and 10. So you would double check. X times 2X, is that 2X squared? Yeah. Then you're going to do the same thing here. 2X times what is going to give me 10X? 2 times what will give me 10? 5. So this is why knowing your multi multiplication facts is really important is it makes this easier. Okay, then we look out here. 1 times x is 1x. So that's going to be 1. Then you check your last box. 1 times 5 is 5. So that means you did it correctly. As long as everything, whenever you multiply it back together, gives you what's inside that box. Everything's positive here, so everything's positive. Go ahead and get the next one started.
What times what? So it's A times C is 23. That adds to get negative 24. 23 is what they call prime because there's nothing that multiplies to get 23 except for 1 and 23. So we look at our factors of 23. The only factors of 23 are 1 and 23 and negative 1 and negative 23. If you're not sure where to go, where to get your factors, go back to your calculator. Put that in Y equals. This helps put numbers to what's on here so you can figure out your magic numbers. Negative 1, negative 23. Let's fill out our box. Our top left box is x squared. There's no number in front, so that makes the first number in our binomial easy. It's just x and x. Then you look, x times what is going to give you negative 23x? Negative 23x. And then what times x is going to be, give us negative 1x? Negative 1. And when your magic numbers are negative, what you factor out will also be negative. So just pay attention to that. Okay, go ahead and glue this in if you haven't already. 